Hey everyone, it's Sammy from Push Square, and it's been a few days, isn't it? I'm sorry I haven't been updating. I took a few days off, and I've been getting back up to speed over the past few days. So um, I've took a little bit of a break from YouTube, but I'm back now. And the good news is that we just hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel, which is an amazing achievement. Um, but I'm not going to stop there. I want to get to 100,000. I want to make this the biggest unofficial PlayStation channel in the world, and I need your help to do that. So if you aren't already subscribed and you're watching this please hit the subscribe button and if not just remember to like the videos because that really helps as well um, but I wanted to make a video today because like I say it has been a while and I wanted to talk about the Tokyo Game Show which is taking place next week um, and if you don't know Sony's actually holding a press conference on Tuesday the 19th of September hope I've got that right um, where it's going to announce some new games, we hope. Um, certainly it's going to show off some new trailers, sort of stuff like that. Um, I mean, last in previous years, it's had some quite good announcements. We saw sort of like Gravity Rush 2, um, Everybody's Golf. All these games have been announced at TGS in the past. So hopefully it's got another good press conference lined up for us. And I wanted to put together 12 predictions for TGS 2017, specifically Sony's press conference, that I think are going to happen next week. Now, TGS is kind of hard to predict. With E3, you can kind of guess some of the things that are going to be there, some of the things that are going to be announced. There's a lot more rumours, whereas because TGS obviously happens in Tokyo and in Japan, we don't get the same kind of rumours and speculation that we get in the West, and thus it's very difficult to predict. I don't think that this is going to be a blockbuster show from Sony. I think because it's got Paris Games Week coming up and PSX coming up as well, I think it might hold back um, some potentially big announcements that have Western appeal. So you know, one of the recurring rumours is obviously some kind of Bloodborne 2 or a new game from From Software. I don't think that they're going to show something like that because I think they'd rather reveal that in the West, if that makes sense. But I have got 12 predictions here. I'm just going to rattle through them. Um, if you do hear my keyboard clicking, it's because I'm just reading some of this stuff off the screen. It's all high production values here at Push Square, but let's get into it. So with number one, I've got Monster Hunter World. This is like the most obvious thing, but I think we're going to see a lot of Monster Hunter World during this press conference. I think Capcom's kind of gambling a little bit with this game. Obviously, the PS4 is popular in Japan, but Monster Hunter's success traditionally has come on handhelds, whether it's the PSP or the 3DS. So to switch to consoles with what is looking essentially like a proper full-scale honest Monster Hunter game um, is kind of uh, a risky manoeuvre. Um, Sony's going to really have to push this in Japan. Um, it should do well. But I think what Capcom's hoping is that the game's going to take off in the West as well. And obviously PS4 and Xbox One are very big in the West. So it makes sense. But I think we're going to see a lot of Monster Hunter World during this press conference. I think we'll see trailers. I think we'll see new gameplay footage. And there'll probably be a couple of new reveals. So my number one prediction is that we're going to see a ton of Monster Hunter World during Sony's press conference. And then my second prediction, this is a little bit of a, a wild card, I guess, but I think this is probably going to happen. Um, you may remember a few years back, Capcom announced that it was going to remake Resident Evil 2, the, you know, the PS1 survival horror game. Now, they obviously remade Resident Evil 1 for the GameCube, and then they've since ported that to the PS4, um, but this is being rebuilt from the ground up um, for the PS4, and I think that we're going to see this. Um, it's been two years since they announced that they were going to do this. That's plenty of time to kind of get something together um, that they can show people, and it makes sense to reveal this one at TGS. I think Biohazard, as it's known in Japan, is really big um, in Asia. And I think it's the right time, the right moment to reveal this Resident Evil 2 remake. Super excited to see that. I also think we'll probably get some more Resident Evil stuff. Like I think the um, Not Hero expansion pack that they announced for Resident Evil 7, that'll probably get a trailer and some gameplay footage as well. So I think this might be a big press conference for Resident Evil. Um, and then my number three prediction is some Vanillaware stuff. Now, if you're not familiar with Vanillaware, they make a lot of gorgeous... Um, games. Recently they put out Odin's Fear on the PS4 which was a port of an old PS2 game 
and they've um, it's just leaked that they're going to port um, Dragon's Crown, which was a kind of beat-em-up um, with a glorious art style. Um, they're going to port that to the PS4, so that hasn't been officially announced yet, um, even though it's leaked, and I think we're definitely seeing that during Sony's press conference. I also think, or I'm hoping, that we're going to see more of a game called 13 Sentinels, which was announced a long time ago at TGS, actually, which is kind of a mecha game. Um, I think hopefully we should see more of that because that can't be too far off from releasing now um yeah so it should be a big show for vanillaware as well um definitely the kind of venue that you'd expect a developer like that to show up so number three i think we're going to see two new games well not new games but i think we're going to see two games from vanillaware then my fourth prediction is Final Fantasy 15. Now this game is like a bad smell. It seems to show up everywhere all the time and you know they're not going to miss an opportunity to get on a press conference stage so I think we might see um, a look at the episode Ignis DLC for Final Fantasy 15 and I think we also might get a roadmap of future content, future updates to come Square Enix is treating this game like it's a service game, um, like it's a Destiny or a The Division or something like that. Uh, they seem to really want to keep um, updating it and adding new content and stuff, so we might see a roadmap of what's to come for Final Fantasy XV. I also think we're going to see some of the PlayStation VR fishing game, Monster of the Deep, because that's one of the big um, upcoming PlayStation VR exclusives that's coming out of Japan. Um, again, Sony is going to want to put that up on stage whether it interests you or it doesn't you know they're gonna put it up on stage i bet you so yeah i think we'll see a few things from final fantasy 15 during this press conference and at number five another like regular occurrence at these japanese press conferences is yakuza studio um we'll definitely be seeing new gameplay footage and trailers and probably bundle announcements for yakuza kiwami 2 um, which is the remake of yakuza 2 and um, we'll probably see some more of their Fist of the North Star game as well which was announced quite recently we don't know a lot about that yet but this seems like the right place for that to be properly revealed and shown off and then at number six I think this is the right place for Shadow of the Colossus now the remake of Shadow of the Colossus was announced at E3 um, E3 earlier this year um, again we haven't seen much of this we know it's a full remake we know that Bluepoint who is kind of a porting specialist is working on the remake but we haven't seen a lot of it yet um, and I think this is a good venue to reveal this you might think that Shadow of the Colossus they would save for Paris Games Week or PlayStation Experience because it does have a lot of western appeal but if they're going to put out a new trailer or new gameplay footage they can easily put that on the playstation blog and social media channels and have it like debut during the press conference i think this is the right product um, at the right time i think i think we'll definitely see shadow of the colossus during this press conference and at number seven i also think we're going to see what normally happens during this tgs press conference is you get a lot of um duplicate stuff from e3 and the reason for that is because um, you know, E3 is generally a western focus show but games like god of war spider-man days gone they're all going to be localized and released in japan and sony will want to present those games to that audience so i think we'll see um, probably not new content but i think they'll really try to push sort of god of war and spider-man and they'll probably have dub trailers and stuff like that um, to show to the japanese audience I've lost count of what number I'm at, but I think I'm at prediction number 9, and, you know, conveniently, I think that's going to be Dynasty Warriors 9. I think um, Dynasty Warriors is big in Japan. Um, you know, my my colleague Robert Ramsey would argue that it's big in the West, but, it, but it's not. But I think we'll see a lot of Dynasty Warriors 2 during this press conference again. We might see some bundle announcements. We'll definitely see new trailers and gameplay footage. Um, and actually, there's often a case that they uh, that Koei Tecmo announces sort of spin-offs to the Warriors series during these press conferences so maybe we'll see uh, a new sort of property a new anime property or perhaps even a, a different video game property that's kind of leveraging that that Dynasty Warriors kind of format and that may be announced during this press conference um, 
I also think we might see uh, quite a few Persona announcements at this press conference. So number 10, I think um, we're going to see maybe um, a lot of new gameplay footage from those two Persona dancing games they announced. If you didn't get this news earlier in the year, they announced that they're bringing out uh, a version of Persona 3 dancing and a version of Persona 5 dancing, which is similar to the Persona 4 dancing game that came out on the Vita a while back. So I think we'll certainly see new gameplay footage and again new announcements related to them. Um, there has been some talk that there's a Persona 5 special edition on the way, um, similar to Persona 4 Golden which might add new content and stuff like that and it's been a year since Persona 5 released in Japan so it would seem timely for announcement relating to Persona 5 to be announced in Japan. And there's also a little bit of speculation, a little bit of rumour regarding a Persona 3 remake. Exactly how likely that's going to be at this press conference specifically, or whether it actually even exists, I don't I don't know. Um, but again, it would be a good venue for something like that, especially if they're going to make a lot of other Persona-related announcements during this press conference. Um, and then at number... I don't. I've completely lost count. I think I'm. I think this is number ten or number eleven. I don't know. <laughs> PlayStation VR. So PlayStation VR has been. It's had a good first year, I think. Um, there have been some dry patches, but there's been a good selection of games, I think, on PlayStation VR. For a first year, for a fledgling technology, I don't think you can complain too much about the quality of the software lineup, but I think the pressure's constantly on Sony to show that there's a good selection of software coming. Uh, Western developers seem to kind of embrace the technology quite well, particularly smaller indie studios, um, but we need to see more coming out of Japan, I think, from the technology technology. Um, we know that there's a new Summer Lesson game coming out and that's definitely going to re be revealed during this press conference but I'm hoping that there's some surprises from other studios. One thing I'd personally like to see is if you've got PlayStation VR and you've played the Playroom VR you'll know that Japan Studio made this kind of platformer and I actually made a video about that which you can find um, elsewhere on the channel but they made this platforming game that really worked really great in PlayStation VR. I'd love to see Japan Studio um, bringing out a fully fledged version of that game actually that would be a great announcement for PlayStation VR and it'd be nice to see um, Japan Studio actually embracing the hardware a bit more and, and putting out quite a few PlayStation VR games actually. Um, my next prediction uh, which like I mentioned earlier I've completely lost count now but my next prediction is um, that we might see some kind of Trails of Cold Steel um, compilation um, now, The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3, which is a game I don't know much about, but I know it's almost out in Japan. I think it comes out in a couple of weeks. Um, and the developer Falcom has been talking about how it wants to bring the previous two titles in the series to the PS4 as well. So we might see some kind of compilation with maybe all three games included, or at least the first two included um, that's announced for that series. And then finally, I think we're going to see a few games from Square Enix during this press conference. So Dragon Quest Builders 2 seems like a good fit for this press conference. Um, I also think we'll see this Secret of Mana remake that was announced recently, which looks absolutely terrible. It looks like a, a really low effort smartphone port to me, but whatever. I think we'll see that. Um, but here's a good wild card for you. Like, I wonder if we might see something from Nia or a Nia Automata 2 or something like that. The reason being, um, Platinum Games hasn't been massively busy um, since Scalebound was cancelled. Obviously they're working on stuff we don't know what, but they've probably had free time to get something near near related ready. Um, a Nia Automata was actually a bit of a big success, both in Japan and um, in the West. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Square Enix wants to strike while the iron's hot, so to speak and just comes out and announces we're doing a new Nier Automata game or something akin to that that actually wouldn't surprise me at all and that would be a big deal actually um, I think if it's going to be announced this is the right venue to do it um, but like I say it's a bit far-fetched there's no rumors or any suggestions alluding to that happening it's just me sort of thinking mm, this could happen um, but we'll wait and see so those were my 12 predictions 
for Sony's TGS 2017 press conference. I'm sorry I lost count about halfway through, but you should have got the general gist uh, of what I'm expecting uh, to be at this press conference. Um, you'll be able to watch the press conference live on pushquare.com. We'll do like live blogging, live chat, and the live stream as well. It's always um, an awkward watch because obviously it's Japanese focused. Um, usually they have some translators which have like the hardest job in the world trying to keep up with what everyone's saying but it makes for some amusing uh, sections and some amusing reveals um, but yeah let me know what you think will be announced at TGS 2017 in the comment section below are you looking forward to the press conference are you going to watch it live um, like I say like the video and remember to subscribe to the channel um, if you are so inclined to and yeah sorry it's been a while since I made a video but thank you so much for watching this one.